Hello friends, and welcome to episode number seven, I cannot believe we've gotten this far, seven of Nostalgia Talk! <whistles> That's our new theme song. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> that actually is the theme song to a show called Ed, Ed, and Eddie, which uh, some of you 90s fans, some of you retro lovers are probably big fans of that show, and you'll be very happy to hear that I have with me, right in front of me kind of, I'm looking at my phone, and he's right on my screen. Matt Hill, the voice of one of the Eds in Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Hey, Matt, how are you? Oh, oh hello there, um, uh, compadre, uh, mister, um, how are you, friend? Uh, it is good to be here, um, and, uh, as Ed would always say, uh, how do you think, uh, how do you get water from this thing here? <laughs> it is nice to be here. Well, I, I got a glass of water right here in case Ed wants it. Okay, good. Awesome. <laughs> And in addition, well, sorry? Allude to that early because that's actually how I ended up scoring the gig of Ed when I finally, out of desperation, I like blew into the mic, which you don't do as an actor, right? And, right. And uh, everyone from the engineer to the, you know, creator Danny of the show went like, what did he just do? And I'm like, oh, how do you get water from this thing here? And literally <laughs> Danny's like, that's the voice! Do that! Do that for the rest of time and you're hired! So... You know, every time I got out of Ed, they always went, play him the thing, play him the thing, and that was me. That, but, you know, eighth audition, and going like, oh, I don't know what they want, and then, you know, I... <laughs> well, it worked for about the ten years that that show was around. It sure did, mm -hmm. and every time I thought about him too much, they always said, dude, no, Ed doesn't think, he just comes in from left field, he comes in from below, he comes in from above. And, you know, so that was that was how I played it, man. Just, like, everything was always just like, oh, yep, you bet your pippy, yep. <laughs> you know, so it was, it was very much a creative process that the genius of AKA and Danny and all the writers, um, they, they let this magic happen that we just kind of, in a way, stumbled into and were allowed to, you know, sort of lend our whatever we have to be able to be part of this thing, right? So it was pretty cool. Nice. And in addition to uh, Ed, he's also been the voice of Raphael on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, one of the Teenage Ed. Mutant Ninja Turtles series. Yo, 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 yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, yeah I got to play Raph actually inside the suit um, for the movie, uh, number three, uh, Turtles in Time. And right. Then, uh, yeah, um, Fox Kids, you know, they, they trusted me with this amazing, iconic character that um, was, uh, been, was a pretty cool ride, man, getting to, you know, lend my small part of that slice of, of Raphael, you know? Cool. So, cool. Yeah. And, and of course, my particular favorite that I grew up with, Corey from Being Ian. Why do you watch Corey? You watch Being Ian, dude. Wow. That is, you know what's amazing, actually? Because when we did our run around North America, it was Corey in Canada for so Being Ian in 2008. Well, obviously, as you were watching, because you were one of those kids, um, it was the reason we even, people knew we were out there across Canada, because, um, you know, it was doing school presentations. Nobody knew Ed, Ed, and Eddie in Canada, because it was only airing in the States and the rest of the world. But, uh, yeah, being able to do, you know, the beloved Corey was, you know, it was a gift, because we talked to lots of kids, right? In school nice. And stuff, so, um, yeah, 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 so... Um, you never know where these wild cartoons and movies are going to take you, right? So, right. Well, thank you very much for doing Corey's voice there. That was a dream come true for me to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, you're just like, oh my god, he is. It's really, it's him. <laughs> yeah. I could have played Corey and Ed and Raph probably for the rest of my life. If they would have just kept doing shows of those three things, it. Nice. That's funny. So let's get right into it. Uh, first question is, what got you interested in acting, voice acting, like just the arts, really? What was what was the big thing that got you into it? Well, it's kind of wild, dude. It was like a progression that really early on, I really did. It was like this desire to just perform. We called it monkey hour at our house because I was <laughs> kids come in 
with so much energy and creativity, my parents were like, you know what, as long as he's not breaking things, so they, you know, let me go outside a lot, uh, and I'd run circles around the, the cul-de-sac, um, and me and my friends, we created these, you know, sort of like, I guess, when I was young, it was the Partridge family, and, um, uh, Donnie and Marie Osmond. Oh, cool. And, you know, for me, it was like, oh my God, I, I, I want to perform like that, you know, and, um, and all that sort of stuff. So I know that's where it started, but um, it was really kind of like that cathartic moment when I was 13. I went, okay, my life's half over. I don't know why I thought my life was half over at 13, um, but I it really, it lit that fire to go, okay, what do I want to do with my life? And so um, I knew I wanted to be an actor and, you know, performer and do all that stuff that we've been doing at the, on, you know, around the cul-de-sac. Right. Um, and so at 13, I, I got my, I inspired my first agent, <laughs> um, who is my, been my agency my whole career. So I'm in year 33 here. And, uh, 33. You know, wow. Dude, I know. Like, it's crazy. That's like, incredible. It's, it's, I, I never thought I'd be the one to say, wow, it sure goes like that, but it sure does. Yeah. You know what? Um, so, you know, as always, I've always thanked my first agent, Dorothy, um, voice because she saw something in me that just went like, dude, I have no idea what that is, but you got a, you have a fire inside you that wants to do this. So she made me take a course to, so that I didn't let her down, you know, taking a chance on me. Um, and that really was the starting of, of this whole 33 years, you know, and, um, uh, you know, obviously a whole bunch of progressions to you sort of like, you know, the next thing or the next job or, you know, face planting a few times, you know, doing an audition and not getting it, but then realizing, oh, okay, well, that's okay, because that's also part of being an actor or performer or right. anything, right? That's why they call it an audition. So it, it allowed me to kind of always go, all right, I have just as much chance as anyone else for these parts that I'm reading for, so give it the best I got. Um, that's all I can be responsible for. Uh, if I get the gig, it was obviously meant to be mine. Uh, if I don't get it, it's obviously meant to be for someone else, you know, and um, that's kind of been this, this kind of, you know, mostly love, but there's been a few hate moments okay. where I'm going, why, why did I not get that, uh, you know, and we're going through a stream of months where I didn't get anything. But it also allowed me to go, okay, well, you've also got this full life that you can develop other things, right? So, you know, it allowed me to always know that I had the power to choose where I was in this moment and also my happiness or my unhappiness, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so I know I said it at the beginning, but it was really a powerful thing for me when we decided to run across, well, we, ran, we decided to run across Canada and then around the printer of the states uh -huh. um, on a tour called run for one planet and it was all to inspire kids to take actions for the health of like ourselves and, and for our earth and that's why i was saying going across canada it was literally being the voice of Corey that allowed us to be into schools with our message because it also helped you know us just connect with kids right nice ready to be able you know at first kids thought we were really cool because we ran there Right mm -hmm. to their town, but then when I'm like, yeah, I want to save the planet with Corey, and my partner Steph was was in this as well, and you know, and kids just went like bananas, and we realized, oh my God, the voices actually could help to lend, you know, positivity, and and almost feeling like we're already going in talking to friends that we already know, right? Right. Um, so it was, it was really cool, you know, and then with being the voice of Ed. When we got into the States, it was that same, like when that phase with, that you just did with me doing Corey, right? <laughs> when we went into the States to go to a school, and I went like, oh, who wants to save the planet with Ed and Sparkly Stephanie and, you know, and Raphael? And, like, schools with 2,000 kids lost their mind. I bet. You know what I mean? Because it was, like, already this connection that, for them, it was doing cartoons, or say, you know, an iconic character, say, in a, in a Ninja Turtles uh, part. But it was also the simplicity of being able to then share a message with them. Right. Because, we, you know, we broke that, that barrier of kids and human beings going like, ah, I mean, I think they're kind of cool, but I don't really know them. But then I just have to go like, hey, how you doing? It's Corey, right? And kids are like, oh, my God, can you do that again? <laughs> you know, and... And I'd be like, yeah, well, you know, could you take an action for the health of the planet? And they're like, yes, I'll do that, and I'll do more, right? 
so wow. it's, it's been this sort of like symbiotic friendship and gift that goes back and forth, right? Yeah. Um, you know, for choosing at 13 to be an actor, right? So, mm. um, you know, little did I know, I mean, I was always grateful for this life, but I really got really clear on how much these voices had meant to have meant to so much and sorry, and to so many, right? Um, you know, so um, I don't know if anybody's listening out there and they're and they're thinking about a career in acting or performing or whatever, do it. You know, answer that calling and you know, like, because I think we're all here to contribute something, right? And if Absolutely. you're a scientist and you're smart. You know, answer that call. If you want to be a doctor, answer that call, right? If you've got a dream, do something. A little, um, anyone who watches or listens to the show knows I'm a big Muppet fan. That's from Cinderella, which is a Sesame Street TV special. <laughs> <laughs> well, did, okay, did you know that my puppeteer for the Ninja Turtles was the puppeteer who um, was the one for Snuffleupagus um, on, uh, on Sesame Street? Marty Robinson? Uh, no, um, Noel, Noel McNeil. Noel McNeil, yeah, he does, uh, Mommy Snuffle Up, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also so, Bear, from Bear in the Big Blue House. Hi, Noel, if you are watching this. Uh, 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 I'll send it to him. I still talk to him, it's amazing. Me too. Yeah. Oh, you talk to him too? That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Well, you say hi to Noel first, then, if you talk to him. Tell yeah. him you talk to him. Just, you, you got know. it. Because, you know, here I was playing Raphael, and then this guy that's, like, connected to, you know, these characters and shows that I, I grew up watching, you know, he's like, yeah, that's me. You know, it was just like the, the, you know, kind of blew my mind moments, right? Nice. So let's get it. Nice. So when you were touring schools and doing the voices of characters like Ed and yeah. Corey, um, yeah. you know, obviously it would be a lot different for the kids who watch the show and then see you because, you know, they're not seeing Ed and Corey, they're just hearing the voice come out of this, yeah. you know, man. No offense. Yeah. Uh, so did so did so when so how did how did they get really to understand you know the fact that you were the voice actor? Well, that's a good question, dude. Because I actually fought using that as our sort of like our connection and our introduction because I wanted our message to be about what it was, which we were running literally from town to town to town as a metaphor and in real time to show kids, hey. I can choose to make a difference. I'm powerful right now being who I am. For us, it was it was showing the power of small steps add up to literally get around a continent. So we ended up running 300, I guess we were 369 days uh, and we ran 11,000 miles. So it was really powerful to be able to go into a school and say, hey, we are from Vancouver. And when, like, when we got to Halifax as an example, being able to go into a school or a community event that we had um, is oh, what's the name of that market? It's a really it's a it's a health food uh, market here um, here in Nova Scotia. Yeah, not choices. Oh, what the heck is it called? Planet Organic. Is that still there? Mm, I've heard the name. I can't say I've ever oh, been there. Yeah, that's okay. We, that was one of our partners as well. But nice. But it's an answer to your question of it was me actually realizing that I wasn't lying to the kids that I was the voice of Corey. Or nice. the voice of Ed, or Raphael, or you know, other stuff that I've been a part of. I I thought we needed to not have that be part of it, but it was when we really started to kind of suck in our presentations because wow. kids want to be also entertained, but it wasn't. We didn't suck. I wasn't to say that, but we were trying to find. We knew why we were out there was to share this message of inspiration with kids to take an action for the planet. Okay. But we then realized that kind of when a middle school was kind of going like, yeah, we think you're kind of cool, but, you know, like one middle school kid kind of went like, <sighs> boring, right? And we knew how far we'd run already that day. It was in the middle of Saskatchewan. And my partner, Steph, she goes like, yeah, that's not cool, you guys. She's like, you know what? And, and out of the blue, she goes, you know what, you guys? You know who I get to run with every day? And obviously, some kid goes like, what, I don't know, Snuffleupagus or whatever, Big Bird, I think they said. She's like, no, I get to run with the Ninja Turtle every day. Right? <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, she's saying it. I'm going to be, okay, I got to step in now. 
so then that was when I started to use the voice. So I finally went, you know, like, yo, 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 it's Saskatoon, you know, middle school, yo, yo. Who wants to sing the plan with Raph? And then literally I was like, yay, Curry too. Because I knew, you know, I knew <laughs> being in was big in Canada. And these kids went from, like, going like, mm, eh, whatever, to like, oh, my God, that is, can you do that again? Right? So then I knew, okay, actually, that was our key. That was unlocking the kid key to then being allowed to be authentic. Because, you know, you were a kid once yourself. You Still am in my head. Well, yeah, you didn't care, right? Like, and, and kids kids are the best barometer. If they think you're BSing them, they'll tell you, <laughs> right? And so right. that yeah. was true for me. It was, in a way, it made our message even more truthful because we were saying, hey, I'm this guy. I get to play Corey on being Ian and can you know, for, can, for, for Canadians, right? And take this message on if it makes you if it makes you feel good about making a choice for the health of the planet, right? So in a way, that moment solidified our our unique way of sharing our voice and our message. In this respect, it was doing a marathon each day around North America. But in the truth of it, it was also these characters that I'd been gifted to be able to be a part of and play, right? Which right. also was yeah. in sharing the message, right? So the more the more we stepped into that, the more we were welcomed into schools because then I actually didn't feel bad going, you know, so like even in our promotions, we'd say, yeah, the voice of Corey or the voice of Ed or the voice of Raphael. Also, with this Run for What Planet tour, it was basically, I don't know, it's just like a big, huge welcoming introduction so that kids and teachers went like, yes, my kids love those shows. Holy crap. I grew up on the Ninja Turtles. Yes. I want Raphael to come to my school, right? I want Ed to come to my school. I want Corey to come to my school. Nice. Right? Um, and so then we, like, oh, my God, we ran we ran our butts off, <laughs> you know? Wow. And at the same time, it was one of the most, um, one of the most difficultly beautiful, uh, gifted 369 days I've ever spent in my life. That's you know, amazing. We should cover our, you know, our, our, our continent. Like, to be able to know what it felt like to run into Halifax, as, a, as an example, right? And run over your guys' version of the Lionsgate Bridge, right? Um, what's your bridge called again? We have the McDonald Bridge. Yeah, the McDonald Bridge, right? That's that big, it's like the green one. It's like, the, like, the it's like, it's like a green uh, Golden yeah. Gate Bridge almost. Yeah, exactly. So it's the same people who built the Lionsgate Bridge who also built the uh, Golden Gate. Did oh, wow. That one as well, right? My my uncle lived underneath the Golden Gate Bridge when he lived in San Francisco. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, it, it's it's amazing that, and I guess in a way that's why it's so cathartic. I guess I never thought I'd be that guy saying, "Wow, thirty three years, so much you know water has gone underneath the bridge of life." Right. And at the same time, oh my God, talk like talk about a full experience, you know and. I feel, I feel grateful that the more I just kept saying yes to these choices that I made, in terms of, in this case, saying I wanted to be an actor, because it scratched the itch from, you know, just going from the cul-de-sac, you know, underneath the spotlight of our streetlight, right. to going, yeah, you know what, I think I could, I think I could do something in this world with this, say, acting ability, or, you know, and then the same thing with my running ability, I'm not the best runner in the world. I just have a lot of energy. I, as long as I feed myself well, um, you know, and literally go slow like a turtle, um, I continue to be able to do that as also another way to stay healthy, but at the same time share a message that I deeply believe in, which is essentially we all matter and that we all deserve to live on a healthy planet. Wise um, words from Matt Hill. Love right, it. Like, uh, mm. You know, but it's really how I feel, right? It's, it's you know, I think in a way, especially right now when we're, you know, we're staring down a, pan, a pandemic in its second wave, I really believe the power of the human spirit is actually even more alive and thriving right. because yeah. we're connected like this because cause we can't go to our next door neighbor's house and have a barbecue right now or, you know, because originally I was supposed to be going across Canada again um, oh, on, wow. you know, Run for One Planet 2.0. Um, yeah, I was supposed to be literally, I, but by this point I was good, I would have been in probably Eastern Ontario. Okay. Um, 
because I was so in, instead of obviously going to go across Canada, um, I just decided to do marathons in and around Vancouver. So, so virtually, I'm on marathon number eighty nine. Um, eighty nine. So, so whatever. What's 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 eighty nine? You're probably good with math. What's eighty nine times forty two point two? Okay. Yeah, I'm usually good with math, but not like that. <laughs> Yeah, leave, leave it in the comments. If you if anybody has an answer to that, put it in the comments. <laughs> 40, because that's what I've been running, turtle speed, 42.2K every day I've been going out. So I started on Earth Day, which is April 22nd, because I thought, okay, COVID, yes, I can't go across Canada again. I can't go into the States again, but I can still get up and do something in my own town. So that was why I chose, okay, I'm still going to do this because... It was something that I wanted to do, and the gift has been able to know the truth is in the doing. Right. right. It doesn't matter if anybody else ever gives a rat's you know what about it. It's it's. I think in, at the end of the day, if we go if we go to bed at night and go, you know what? Yeah, I did the best I could do today. Whatever that is for everybody, right? I don't know. I think that that's a successful day. You know and. Nice. Some days are going to be feeling way more successful than others. Some don't feel successful at all, right? Right. You know. So you know, it's it's. I I believe in COVID. If it's if it's taught me anything, it's it's. Well, like I said, it's the, I believe the power of the human spirit is like a lot more alive than it's ever been because because in a way we've all been forced to stay local, right? But yet it's forcing us to be able to then like maybe some people haven't talked to their neighbors in. Mm. Maybe some people haven't talked to their family members in years, and they mm. live in the same house. Who you knows, right? We've all got different, we've all got different stories, and it's been such a cool way to to also be out there locally. You know, because I go to twenty one k out and twenty one k back, but the amount of people that I've met in that twenty one k return loop mm -hmm. has been unbelievable. Right? Where now a lot of them don't know what I'm doing. But a lot of them do because they've asked. They're like, what the hell are you doing out here every day? Right? And so now I got a fan club of people going like, what number are you on today? Right? So, you know, I'm like, all right, 89. Right? And so it's it's a neat way to, to still show, show yourself that we can still stand up for something and do something that makes us want to get out of bed every morning, as an example. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So probably a really long answer, isn't it? Eh, I, th I think you covered the basics there. <laughs> what is the secret of life? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah. Do you, um, before I ask this next question, with what you were saying about people, like, like when you go to schools and, and do the voices for kids, um, can I tell you a little story? Yeah. So, this is something I've talked about on the podcast before, but a couple of years ago, my family went to L.A. for this Disney Comic-Con type thing. And a lot of my favorite voice artists were there uh, that do voices for Disney. Sorry? Was it, was it San Diego Comic-Con or no? D23. Uh, it's like Comic-Con, but Disney-related. Oh, Disney-related. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. So, and Jim Cummings was there. Do you know who Jim Cummings is? Um, no. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for the viewers out there who don't, he's Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Pete, Tasmanian Devil, and... The terror who flaps in the night, Darkwing Duck. And honestly, he was, I, I watched House of Mouse, Goof Troop, Darkwing Duck, yeah. Winnie the Pooh all my life, and I told him that, and he thanks me as Darkwing Duck. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that the best? I should have recorded it. I should have been like, hey, could you do that again? I wish I did. Uh, yeah, but you know, but, okay, here's the thing, dude. Did you not feel... In that moment, that was the most truthful, obviously, because that was the truth for you. You're like, dude, I'm blah, blah, blah. This was me watching you. He felt so honored by that that he went, holy crap. This guy really likes what I put out there in the world. So he answers you in that voice because it's a, it's a continual feedback loop of a, kind of like a win-win because you're coming to this huge voice actor, but also he's also a human being too, right? Right. Oh, yeah. So, Little did you know, maybe that was his moment that day where another, you know, you got through to a part of him that maybe went like, nah, maybe, maybe I'm just not cutting it the way I used to. Who knows? I mean, I don't know. I'm not Jim Cummings, but we're all 
we're all human beings on the same level, and that's where I think that's the that's partly why the a fan event like that is so powerful. Because well it, said. You, know, you get to be you know meet up sort of like a you know um, someone you've really admired, but they also get the gift of you because they wouldn't have what they have without you going like, oh my god, I love that voice, or oh my god, I love that movie, or oh my god, I love that book, right, or whatever, mm -hmm. right? So I don't know. That's a very good way to put it. Yeah. So, do you yeah. remember the very first voice that you ever did in animation for TV? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. For animation, it was um, the voice of Kevin in um, what is it? Um, why am I blanking? Because it was the first prelay I ever got. Uh, it was a class. It was an exciting one. It was an NBC cartoons. Um, I'll look it up on IMDb and then I'll. Captain I'll... Nintendo. It's funny, I just was talking to Pat Fraley, who was the voice of Krang in the original uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and he did a bunch of the Saturday morning cartoon voices. Absolutely, you know, so, because same thing, right, we all got to get our start somewhere, right, mm -hmm. and so it's really neat to be able to have had my start, but then all of a sudden, then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, okay, well I know I wanted to do this for the rest of my life, so in some respects, it's kind of neat being 52, and starting at 13 and going, all right, well, if I'm going to live to be 100 or 104, geez, I'm like, how long am I going to be able to get to be able to do voices? So I start right. to think like, okay, well, maybe I'll start playing like middle-aged people like when I'm 60, who knows? <laughs> right. Cool. <laughs> maybe so, when I'm 60, I'll be able to still play like a 13-year-old. Who knows? You know? Well, have you, uh, do you know who I mean by uh, Jerry Nelson? He's one of the Muppet performers. Yeah, the Count, and my my, my particular favorite, Harry. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. I, I noticed that when he does Robin and Harry and Gobo, he often has that very kiddish kind of voice. And even as he was, uh, I don't want to say he was getting old, but as he was getting up there in age, he was he was still able to do the nasally kind of childish uh, voice. And with Harry, he had that laugh. <laughs> oh my god, it sounds evil. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So event eventually, this is the role you were talking about before, Raphael in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and you were the um, you were inside of the suit for the film. Yes. So did it feel any different doing the um, doing the TV series uh, than doing the film? Remarkably. <laughs> both I believe that. Pounds, both seventy pounds different because like being inside the suit, we had all the animatronics. It was basically felt like a big huge. Like basically like a big like kabuki theater almost where you know all our acting had to be huge and big because we had to bring the performances alive underneath the sort of like the skin of the foam and latex rubber and you know this this head that had you know full of servos and all these different machine parts and stuff so it was really loud and heavy and hot but it was one of the most favorite experiences because you know for awesome. me it was the perfect being able to lend my athletic abilities. Even though I'm not a, um, I'm not a gymnast or a martial artist, but it allowed me to use being able to train for that in a way. So I got to be a, I mean, I'm not a great martial artist still, but you know, I got to be like, I don't know, first time in my life, I, I, I kind of went, yeah, all right, I, I could do some stuff, you know, and um, and then being able to do, you know, some flips and things like that was a lot of fun. On top of then being able to know that on the outside. It was helping to bring to life again this iconic character from the you know from the turtles series, right? So mm -hmm. for me, that's been the legacy gift. Um, is even in real time, like when we were filming, gosh, like 1992. So like it was wild to have like streams and streams of kids and parents visiting the set, and I really actually didn't meet any of them because they were all wanting to get a picture with Raph and the rest of the turtles. Wow. But I, but I just remember having pictures later of my puppeteer because I'd hear Noel in my in my earpiece saying, "Daddy, just put your hand out." There's because we were blind, deaf, and dumb inside these suits most of the time, right? I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So when breaks, you 
know, they'd string people in to get pictures with the turtles, right? So I literally, you know, it was more like hearing, you know, and uh, this is, uh, this is George, uh, George, George, George. I'd be like, all right, yeah, crap, crap on you, dude. You know, and, and then I'd see a picture later of like a newborn in my arms or like somebody just turned 19 or somebody just asked his girlfriend to marry him. And like we had everything. Everybody wanted to take pictures with us. Yikes. So it was pretty cool, you know. Yeah. I can I can imagine, but at the same time, yikes! Well, it made you realize. But here's the yikes moment, dude. When we went around North America on the run, mm -hmm. it was all those moments, like streaming back to me at like 150 miles an hour of people going, "Oh my God, Ninja Turtles changed my life! Oh my God!" And Nettie absolutely is helping me get through the toughest childhood. Like, oh, wow. and then also making me laugh my you know what off every day. It's, it's just such a beautiful, I don't know, crazy show, right? And, and, but, you know, but real human moments of people, you know, saying thank you to me for being, say, a turtle or being Ed or being Corey or, you know, whatever. But then sharing with me that maybe it was like, you know, listening to Raphael and the turtles, you know, living by a code of honor and to believe in yourself and, you know, no man is a failure, you know, that has friends, no woman as well, right? It's like, it, it was real time getting feedback from people saying, thank you for choosing this life, right? right? So they were thanking me, but I was thanking them at the same time going, thank you for giving me such a great life, right? Um, that, that to me is what, like, it changed everything. Um, wow. You know, for, you know it, it was really... And I honestly, I, with everything in me, I didn't think it was going to be that kind of a feedback because I was grateful for getting to be an actor. Obviously, like it was like I was I was really happy with my decision to you know to answer that call. But nice. it was going out on the run that then running into people's lives. It was I don't know. It was it was that kind of like the big kind of like oh, that's why I also chose to do this because. It's had such a profound effect on others, right? Right. Um, and I didn't know because I'm, I'm so technically challenged. It's brutal. <laughs> um, so you know, I've never, I've sort of never watched fan things, and I've never, you know what I mean? Like I've never, I've never attended anything. Um, you know, where some actors, you know, they read the, the papers and they, and they, you know, get the ratings numbers and all that stuff. I didn't care. I would just go out and run. And if I got a new job, I was happy of getting to do another voice or another, you know, gig, right? Right. So in a way, that was my real time. Thank you from everyone that was like saying thank you to me for you know inspiring, right? So. I love it. Yeah. So thanks, man. Yeah, it's um, it's been, it's I guess maybe at thirty three years, maybe that's what you get for choosing so young. I don't know. You nice. know, it's um, you know, I just know that. I think in a way, as being alive and being a human, we really, we always have that power to choose to go, okay, how do we want to share our voice in the world, right? And, you know, um, for me, this is how I chose to share it, right? So for others, it's being being a doctor or being a, like that or being a rock star or being a scientist or being, you know, like that to me is like, you know, I, I go like that, that to people, right? Because that's like, you know, you know, everybody's way smarter than I am, but this is my smart way of choosing to do stuff, right? Because mm -hmm. if, if it was up to me to figure out the trigonometry to get a, you know, get a space up into, or get a plane up into space, <laughs> that wouldn't be good, right? So, um, but now I could do a voice out of space, you know, space man or <laughs> I believe like that. Right? That sounds like something you would do. <laughs> no, I'd give my best shot, that's for sure. Nice. <laughs> So did you, so you got the part of Raphael because you were in the film, right? Uh, oh, you mean like to do the voice of Raph, like on the, on the Fox Kids show? Yeah. Um, no, well, because originally they asked me if I wanted to jump in the suit again. Um, and at that point, I felt like I'd really kind of done Raph in that respect. And so I felt really honored that they said, well, you know what, would you like to do the voice? I was like, yeah, I'd love to do the voice. Cause <laughs> I, I wanted to do the voice when I was in the when I was inside the suit, but the mm. um you know the gentleman who had done it before um for the other movies um chose to to sign on and do it so I was stoked. Fair enough. So in a way, 
for me, it was a, it was like a, a cap. It was like a, what do they call it? It was like a, you know, bow and feather. What the hell do you call it? It was like, you know. Bow and arrow? Yeah. It was, no, it was like kind of like tying up the bow. So, right? So, because I got to be Raph in the guts of him in the suit, but then I got to do the voice of him. So, kind of like our our, our friendship and our brotherhood was solidified. Nice. <laughs> Put it that way. I, I can't imagine why anyone would want to be in those uh, suits. They're hot. You know, you can't see out of them. Dude, I loved it. It's like, but I love hot. So they get, you know, I mean, I shouldn't say if I would have signed up to do maybe like, you know, maybe that for the next 30 years, I probably would have been probably going like, okay, I'm good. I don't need to get in that suit anymore. Um, but it's, yeah, it's fun too. Uh, awesome. It's just fun. Awesome. It's just fun. So, you mentioned how you got the part of uh, Ed, and for anyone who's very confused by the name Ed, Ed, and Eddie, who's never seen the show before, I'm just going to clarify something. There were two Eds, Ed spelt E-D, and then Ed spelt E-D-D, and then Eddie, which is kind of obvious, E-D-D-Y. Matt was the first Ed, and you mentioned how you got that part. You just did a line, and they really liked that. Um, big question here. Since I mentioned the confusion of the name, was it ever confusing for the uh, directors and the producers when they would be like, okay, Ed's going to say a line, and then Ed's going to say a line back to Ed, stuff like that? No. <laughs> it was always very direct. And that's what I loved about working with um, Danny, the creator of it, because he had this whole series inside his brain. The guy is genius. Like, he had stuff written down, yes. But everything, the way they were, the way that they were supposed to breathe, the way they're supposed to, you know, say words, he had that all worked out in his head. And so our job was exploring to try and figure out, it, you know, because Danny would let us know pretty quickly if we weren't doing it right the way that he saw it in his head. So there was never any confusion. It was always like, and single D, because it'd be like Matt, right? Or, you know, Tony, who played Eddie, right? Or Sam, who played Double D. Um, it was always Is that what you great. called him on set? That's what you called the characters? Oh, oh yeah, we called each other for lots of things, yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> oh, good, though. We all it was always, you know, those guys are, like, three of my best friends. So, yeah, we're, uh, yeah, oh, I mean, for real. Like, we're all, we all just great friends, actually. Right. Um, but it was, like, kind of cool because we were already friends as actors. Because Vancouver's not that big a town. Um, so for us to then, in some respects, get to do these characters for, you know, the eight years that we did them, um, we became even better friends, but more like brothers, right? So That's sweet. So as brothers, right, you know, brothers roughhouse with each other. Brothers are, like, cruel to each other with the way that they, you know, bug each other. And so we were no different, right? But it was all out of love, so, you know. Nice. I've ne I never had any uh, brothers growing up. I just have one sister. Um, so, and, and, and a dog, uh, if that counts. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But believe it or not, um, this kind of goes into, uh, quite late. I was going to bring up being Ian last, but when I was watching the show, I used to want brothers named Kyle and Corey. <laughs> well, there you go, my brother. You can have a brother for the Kyle guy. There you go. Nice. <laughs> So a, a little a little taste of nostalgia for the big Ed Ed Nettie fans who are listening to this. Do you have any favorite episodes or moments from that show? Oh my god. Um there was one moment and I still don't even know what episode it was from, but when all of a sudden Ed comes into into this shot and it's going like, Oh, kick my feet, kick my feet, kick my feet and he's like sitting on the back of a of a, a log raft. That moment, I don't know why. Um, but then also, because Christmas is my favorite season, um, but the Christmas movie just completely, for me, just like, I, I just loved it. Like that one scene yes. where Ed literally basically just rips the whole side of the house off because, you know, he's going inside to give Santa gravy cakes and milk and, you know, um, that for me, that was Ed to a T. And also because I love Christmas, right? So, mm. you know. I, I watched a video on YouTube. Uh, it was a fan video of Ed, Ed, and Eddie that was unbelievably profane. Uh, but they, it, basically, it was an analysis of the intro for that show where Ed, your Ed, uh, pushes uh, Ed, EDD, out of the way. And he's like, okay, they're going to make the slowest character the strongest. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, <laughs> imitating life, I guess. No, I'm just kidding. Um... 
So how did you, so of course I had to bring it up you know it's something we've been talking about for basically the whole interview anyone who remembers me in elementary school knows that I was obsessed with this show like that's what I would do in the morning have breakfast in front of the TV and uh, and just and just watch it until it was time to go to school because because it, it was on in in the morning so that's what I would do yeah. as, as I was eating right yeah. yeah. So, yeah, anybody who remembers me in elementary school, friends, teachers, they remember I was so obsessed with this show. How did you get the role of Corey on Being Ian? Ah, the role of Corey. Let me tell you, son, it was uh, just, you know, it, it was literally, it was almost like Ed and Nettie, except a little more not, it wasn't as frantic. Because Ed and Nettie was literally like a, almost not a bloodbath, but it was like a, we, the, the callbacks went so long, so many of them, mm -hmm. that it created new records. But bef just before that, getting being in, a lot of the time it'll come down to where the producers and the director go, yeah, you know what, okay, I think we've got our cast. Let's kind of get maybe the two people who are now up for Corey as an example, or three people I think it was in this respect. So we all had the scenes that we were going to go in and record. There was basically nine of us, let's say for these, well, let's say, I don't know, let's just say even for Corey. There was three of us. And each of us figured it out pretty quickly. Oh, oh, you're coming back for Corey too. Oh, oh, you're coming back for Corey. And that person looking at me, you're coming back for Corey. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's all like, it's a little bit of a competition because we were going like, I want to get the part. But at the same time, no, oh man, okay. It's like, a new tryout for another team, right? It's like, put me in, coach. So, same thing. When they called us in, it was like, all right, here's my time to, like, my super, you know, my super skills contest, right? It's like, skate fast, you know, like, hit hard, you know? And, and so, for me, it was like, do this voice for Corey. And um, I guess they, I don't know, if, I, I, I never found out what it was about that that they liked. Um, but I just, you know, I found out about a couple of days later after that second callback, and um, I was like, "What?" You sounded like Corey right there. I mean, apart from just being the voice actor of Corey, you sounded like him right there. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> crazy how that works, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but once again, that's the feedback loop, right? Because I have that Corey. And, oh my God, it was a long time ago, mm. right? It yeah. doesn't feel like it for me. <laughs> well, of course not. But in, and it, so for me, think about that too, right? It's like to be able to like. Now, even though the show's ended a long time, but then now right. still, you know, like, do that guy, right? You know, like, oh my God, it's Corey, right? It's, it's still, the gift keeps giving that, so thank you. Yeah, well, when I told my, like, my family even knew that I was obsessed with being in, so when I told them that I was going to be chatting with the voice of Corey, uh, basically, <laughs> my... Like, well, my mom came home and I was like, hey, mom, guess who I've got coming on the show? She's like, who? I was like, Matt Hill. She's like, who's Matt Hill? And I was like, Corey from Being Ian. She's like, oh, cool. See? Then my whole career, is, I love that. It's like, oh, yeah, Matt Hill. Who's Matt Hill? Oh, the voice is like, oh, my God. So, right. Thank you to your mom for keeping you fed and watered and that they made you go to bed and so you could be well and, you know, um, get out of the street, so uh, thanks for growing up with Corey, man. Appreciate right. it. I would kind of describe Corey's character, and this probably sounds uh, kind of uh, harsh, but I would describe Corey as one of Ian's older but very stupid brothers. What do you mean by that? <laughs> oh, hi, Corey. I didn't realize you were right there. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, stupid. What do you, what do you, what do you mean, stupid? Who's stupid? Okay, um, how about the kitchen, how about the, how about the kitchen wall? You want to describe that? <laughs> what, 
Was yeah. it was it Kyle's fault or or whose fault was it? Because you're kind of both to blame. Oh, totally. <laughs> uh, that was actually my favorite moment with uh, with Kyle and Corey in the whole series because um, what was his name? Louis Carrillo, who did Ken. Did I pronounce that right? Louis. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember him. I remember him imitating basically you as Corey, because and and Ty Olson, a fellow Nova Scotian. He was born here in Halifax. No, I do. Yeah. Ty, good human, good guy. Yeah. So basically, he's imitating them both because they had wrecked the kitchen, and Ken's like, "No, no, no, you two jokers are gonna help me rebuild this wall," and they're like, "But it's Corey's fault." No, it's not. It's his. You're both to blame. So he. And you remember how it happened before. Corey sees a spider and hits the wall with a sledgehammer. Thank God you watched the show, man, because no, I didn't remember. So okay. thank you. Yeah. You could have said, Corey, like, drove the car into the wall. And I would have said, yeah. No, Kyle's yeah. done that. Kyle has done that before. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so after he hits the spider, uh, Kyle's like, no, no, that's not how you get a spider. Pulls out a jackhammer. This is how you get a spider. And so Ken imitates that. He picks up a sledgehammer. He's like, I'm Corey. Oh, a spider. Eek. Hits the other wall. Kyle's laughing. And Ken's like, I don't know why you're laughing. Oh, Kyle. I'll show you how to get the job done. And does exactly what Kyle does with the jackhammer. Vicky comes in. She's like, Ken. Ken's like, they did it. <laughs> well, that's kind of true. They did it first. Yeah. I never considered being a voice actor because, you know, you kind of do everybody's voice pretty darn good, dude. As a matter of fact, I have, yes. Please do. Okay. Is there anything going on in Halifax? Do it. Do it! Nice. I, it'll, uh, I'm currently in film school at the moment, and this is my very last year of film school, and afterwards I'm going to try to get into the business. Uh, voice acting, I'll still look at when I'm in the business, but it'll have to be occasionally. Uh, yeah, get in the yeah, Do, man. Shine your light, brother. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. good. Nice. Nice. So, um, you mentioned that there are some episodes of Being Ian that you, uh, that you don't remember anymore, and that's okay, it was a long time ago, uh, but that show did have quite a few guest celebrities, like, uh, Gob, and, uh, of course I'm not wearing a Gob shirt, I'm wearing a Simple Plan shirt, but it's a very similar band. Um, there was Gob, Trevor Linden, David Suzuki, uh, are there any I'm missing? You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, but, you know, I mean, those are some pretty good, like, you know, and I'm fans of all these people, so it was like, I'm Corey, but yet I'm like, hi, hi, Jeff. Like, I just totally turned into, like, like a 12-year-old. Like, Mascot yeah. auditions episode with Trevor Linton. <laughs> it's like, come on, right? It's just like, you know, but it's like, to me, he's larger than life. He's like, you know, he's our biggest, like, Captain Canuck, for God's sakes. And, you know, Dave Suzuki, same thing, I'm like... So, so, yeah, you, so you Holy did crap. get to meet them both, right? Yep. yep okay, yep, cool. Yep. Nice. So, you know, it feels neat, right? Like, it, it's neat to be a part of these things, but at the same time, it's like, don't ever think that, like, well, at least for me at least, I'm not that cool, right? So, you know, people affect me huge, so, you know, um, I, yeah, it's, uh, so, you know. <laughs> nice, nice, yeah. Like, take a shot, take a shot, take a shot. Yeah. <laughs> like, trip. And his wife live around the corner from me, for real, in my neighborhood. And I see them all the time. Oh my and god. I still, I still don't say hi, because I'm just like, hi. Does, know, does he mean, remember you? No, because he meets everybody. That's what I mean, right? Fair like, enough. I, Fair enough, I, yeah. I'm an announcer at, like, you know, Grand Fondo races, and so I get to interview him, but I'm still this, like, I'm still 12. I'm still like, oh, that's Trevor Linden. Holy crap. <laughs> right? So, Whatever. Nice. I should have wore my uh, Canucks shirt for that, but you've got a Canucks hat on, so it looks like you beat me to it. That's true. That's true. Yep. Right. So this is my ode to like Ed and Eddie, you know, even though it's double D more, you know, wearing the hat and stuff. So yeah, you know, but it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Um, I got about I got about five minutes. Uh, okay. Left uh, I I'll uh, I'll I'll wrap it up. I I do have one final question. Um, awesome, I I know I know that uh, you had told me this before I started filming, but uh, what are you working on right now? You want to tell our audience? <laughs> Oh, thank you very much, man. Well, like I said, I was, um, I'm scribing my, um, my first official book, which is uh, called Turtle on the Run. Mm -hmm. um, Love it. Nice name. Kind of works, eh? So it's, uh, it's 
so really, I, it's what it's turned out to be is, I guess in some respects, it's all the face plant moments I've had in my life. Right. Me, but at the same time, picking myself up and going like, you know what, keep, just keep going. Put one foot in front of the other. You know, shine the light and know that, you know, your voice matters in this world right now. And, and um, so, you know, um, it, it's, it's become a really cool way to basically share, you know, at this point I'm 52 rotations around the sun. Um, you know, and what have I learned? And, you know, how do I maybe, how could I maybe share this with others? Right. Um, you know, maybe I haven't yet, right? So, yeah. So that way, and then I was telling you before, in the COVID altered, um, instead of going, you know, physically across Canada, I've been running a marathon um, every few days um, locally. Here nice. In the beautiful city of Vancouver. So, you know. So virtually, I will be in Halifax by probably just after Christmas, actually, sir. Okay. Let me let me know. I will. Absolutely. You can high five for me. You can you know you can be like, all right, way to go, Corey. You made it. You made it, dude. Sure thing. Well, Matt, thank you very much for uh, being on the show. And for the viewers out there, I have a special announcement about Nostalgia Talk. Uh, on Sunday, I'm going to be filming a very, very exciting episode with a very exciting guest. I won't say who, but I will put a link in the corner of the video. And if you can guess who it is, leave a comment. But it won't be out till probably Monday. I know who it is! No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it? <laughs> Thanks again, Matt. Peace. See you later. Stay safe. Be good to each other. <laughs>